We've got a distinguished guest this morning, the Lord Mayor of London, Fiona Wolfe. She's visiting four African countries in our Cape Town studio now. Good morning to you, Lord Mayor. Uh, and I ha we Good have morning. to call you Lord Mayor because, uh, as we know, there is a Mayor of London who is Boris Johnson. He's a Conservative Party leader. And uh, you are the Lord Mayor, and it's the City of London that you uh, are the Mayor of. And perhaps it will be a bit cumbersome to call you Lord Mayor throughout the programme. So if I may call you Fiona, if we could Absolutely. call you Fiona from now on. But you do have a unique position, don't you? It's non-party partisan, party political. Uh, you have this unique situation in the global, uh, in, in constitutionally, if you like, in Britain, but also in the global financial services market. Yes, that's right. The, the, the Lord Mayor of the City of London is, in fact, an ambassador for the whole of the UK-based uh, services sector. But obviously, based in the city means that you're going to focus on financial and professional business services. Well, with me in Johannesburg is Kirby Lekranji. He's our market commentator for this morning. Kirby? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, mean, I think one of the things is, is if we look at the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, it actually has a very strong affiliation uh, with the London Exchange, uh, and that has been the, been garnered over the years. Fiona, maybe just a question, uh, you know, from my perspective, the one of the things that we see on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange is the classification system that we utilise for companies here in South Africa. We utilise the FTSE system, which obviously is a is based on 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 the, on the London Exchange. We obviously have many companies here in South Africa which are listed in London. What are, what's the future of that look like? What, what, is, uh, what do you think needs to happen in order to ensure that the JSC and the London Stock Exchange can work more closely together? Well, I think that they, uh, they probably know, know well that the whole area of uh, technology in stock exchanges is a big part of their businesses. And, um, uh, you know, I'm amazed at how uh, how much investment the, the London Stock Exchange in particular makes in, in technology. Um, it's um, uh, the, the ideas that they have for uh, not just the sort of classic dual listing, but, uh, but, but other, other very fast platforms, um, well, they're, they're amazing. <laughs> Fiona, um, your purpose of being, well, the four African countries we can talk about, but let's just start with South Africa. You see opportunities, uh, particularly the capacity, expertise, finance that uh, the City of London can bring to bear on our infrastructure program, and boy, do we need it. We've been talking about it for so long, but it's not happening. Mm. Yes, that's right. It, 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 infrastructure is exactly um, the area of uh, that everybody talks to us about because they're looking at uh, new techniques for long-term finance for infrastructure. You know, the old idea that you had sort of you know long-term bank debt um, just doesn't really work. It's not sustainable um, under you know Basel one, two, and three. Uh, so what we're seeing is, is a, a lot of collaboration and discussion in the City of London with new models, new types of capital markets products, new hybrid funds, uh, new derivatives, um, debt market instruments, uh, bond issues, Islamic finance, all coming together uh, with, in, in an effort to meet the, the enormous uh, volume of uh, demand for, uh, for infrastructure financing. Fiona, um, many South African corporations, uh, you know, have got some bases in London and obviously, you know, across the United Kingdom. Um, one, of the, one of the things that I hear them talking about when they come back to South Africa is the actual cost of doing business in London and just the cost of general living in London, which apparently has gone up insurmountable relative to South African uh, standards. Very, pretty difficult for a South African business to kind of enter the London market and to be able to do business there. What are you doing as, um, as, a, as a city in order to try and enhance this kind of inflow from, uh, from emerging markets? Well, um, what I say to uh, most companies that are looking uh, to establish uh, themselves um, in London is um, we have lots of very competitive cities uh, in the UK which, um, which offer uh, the talent um, and the office accommodation uh, at, uh, at, at more affordable levels. So many uh, foreign companies and businesses and banks have got um, um, perhaps a head office in the city, 
uh, but, uh, but outsource their operations. And indeed, we're seeing some of the American banks putting more front office um, operations out, um, whether, you know, to uh, not just the, the Manchester, Birmingham, you know, Edinburgh, Glasgow, Leeds, whatever, but uh, uh, JP Morgan uh, down to, uh, to Bournemouth, to, to, to Dorset, uh, one of the biggest regional employers. Yep. Fiona, uh, we, there are a couple of other issues from the South African perspective that we would like to, to raise, but we can do that in a moment. And let's uh, move now to Kenya, where our market commentator this morning, uh, Ali Khan Satchu, uh, is waiting for us. Of course, you've arrived in South Africa. You're still to get to Kenya, also Uganda, Tanzania. But Ali Khan, what will you be That's expecting right. and uh, be interested in from the Lord Mayor? We look forward to saying Karibu, which is welcome in Swahili, to the Lord Mayor. I think it's as early as tomorrow. Um, where, when she visits here in Nairobi. And the point I would like to make in being a sort of Kenyan, a British uh, sort of a person having worked in the city for many years, here in Kenya we have very, very deep and abiding ties. About half the value of the stock market is held by UK PLC companies. The ties that bind us have been long-term, historical and are very, very deep. And coming back to the Lord Mayor, clearly with the, with the focus on the City of London, there's been a, a big collaboration uh, with the Stock Exchange, which, by the way, uh, the IPO starts trading tomorrow. My question uh, to the Lord Mayor, Fiona Wolf, is, you know, how is she seeking, to, what areas is she seeking to build uh, when she comes to East Africa? Obviously, we've had this big expansion in the oil and gas sector. There seem to be lots of opportunities. But what is the focus uh, for the Lord Mayor when she comes, lands in Nairobi? Well, I think the, uh, the two obvious things, one I've already mentioned, which is uh, infrastructure financing. Um, you know, every country is challenged by both infrastructure and energy. Um, and there's, uh, there's, uh, there's lots, of, uh, lots of things we can do together, um, building on those historical links that you mentioned. Um, but also, um, uh, I'm, I'm keen to engage with the, uh, the Capital Markets Authority. Uh, we've been talking about the development of uh, capital markets uh, in Kenya and in East Africa generally. Um, it's important that these markets uh, develop uh, because of the, um, the constraints that I've uh, mentioned uh, under, the, under Basel. You know, we can't turn to banks for every every sort of financing um, and it's it's long-term finance which I think is the is the challenge for us all um, not just long-term finance for infrastructure but actually you know long-term savings products did you know I mean in Europe 57 percent of us keep our long-term savings in short-term deposit accounts uh, which can't be right <laughs> I don't know if you have another comment in response to that. What interests me also is that Fiona Wolf is a lawyer, and I think your speciality was energy law. And I'm, I'm using that as a, as a way of getting into asking you, on the one hand, there's a lot of interest in infrastructure development and uh, growth in Africa. On the other hand, there are a lot of obstacles, regulatory uh, and uh, bureaucratic. You must have had uh, some dealings with that, and uh, are you able to help cut through these things? We, we can do, I think, two things. One is to continue to the bang the drum for um, stable and predictable policy environments um, and, and tax regimes, uh, visa regimes, you know, everything that makes uh, business easy to do. Um, and then it's a question of gathering up the, you know, the nuts and bolts of the kind of the, you know, the irritations uh, of, uh, of investors, whether it's just bureaucratic delays or uh, lack, of, lack of clarity, um, and to, to feed in a list of those things that would actually uh, make uh, the environment more, more attractive. I mean, the World Bank Ease of Doing Business um, Index is, is, is a good starting point. Um, but, but nevertheless, it's sort of feeding in the practical difficulties, and oftentimes they are just kind of inadvertent things that are just a bit slow uh, where we can help to, um, to point out. Uh, but, you know, all countries are, uh, are struggling with this. Ali Khan, you had another point? If, if I can. 
Yes, if I can just come back to the Lord Mayor and her experience in the energy sector and the legal side. Obviously, we're sitting on a very exciting moment here in the oil and gas sector. The likes of BG, PLC in Tanzania, Tallow Oil um, here in Kenya yes. have been at the forefront of uh, discovering the oil and gas uh, in this region. Um, what, how is the Lord Mayor uh, approaching uh, you know, these different jurisdictions, Tanzania, Kenya, a lot of volatility around policy making uh, 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 and you know, w there is clearly a lack of certainty in many areas, the desire for some countries to raise revenue w via windfall taxes. What is the message the Lord Mayor is delivering to in leadership in Kenya and East Africa? Well, I think the message is that you've, there is so much experience around the world that actually is collected through the city of London that uh, we, can, we can let these countries know what's worked and what hasn't worked in other countries, um, what deters investment. After all, you know, they're anxious to capture the benefits of the natural resources that they have. Um, and we've been, uh, you know, we've been at it for, you know, 75, 80 years or so. Um, and uh, we, can, um, uh, we can give them, you know, lots of lessons learned. I mean, one of the unique things about the, about the city uh, and the UK in general is that it's actually quite a small domestic market and it's attracted a lot of um, international players. Um, and, and we become sort of the collectors and implementers of best practice all over the world that, because the city becomes a trampoline. Um, and so, uh, you know, very happy to, uh, to help, uh, help people understand what works and what doesn't. Well, obviously, there'll be lots of interest in East Africa when you get there, Fiona. Uh, Ali Khan leaves our discussion now, so we've done the East African Thank component. You. Thanks, Ali Khan, uh, for the questions. As well, we continue our conversation with the Lord Mayor of London, Fiona Wolf. You might think, why do we keep saying the Lord Mayor? Well, there are two mayors of London. The Lord Mayor is at the City of London, which is a very small but very important part of London. Of course, London as a great metropolis uh, has a different mayor altogether. Uh, Fiona, you, you joined us earlier, and uh, what struck me also is uh, the influence of the City of London, the expertise, the market influence capacity that it has. Now there's an issue which I think a lot of people didn't take too seriously but is suddenly taking very seriously and that's the proposed uh, independence uh, move by Scotland. Uh, the First Minister of Scotland, Alex Salmon, has uh, been pushing this very hard. Now in recent days apparently the opinion polls are saying that this could go the way of the yes vote. In other words, Scotland leaves the United Kingdom after 300 odd years. Uh, and people are asking questions. What will happen to the pound? What will happen to investment? What will happen to the city, in fact? So what is the conversation in the city about this? You must have kept a very close eye on this. Well, yes, um, it, it is very much um, a, a concern of the city of London uh, because of the strong financial services sector uh, that you find in Scotland, and particularly in Edinburgh. Uh, where they're, they're, they're famous for insurance and asset management, but they have a full range of services as well. Um, and if, they, uh, if there is a, a yes vote for independence, then um, a huge number of details would need to be sorted out, of which the, uh, you know, the, the pound and the EU membership would be uh, just a couple. Uh, we've talked about how financial services uh, would be regulated in Scotland um, because of the huge connectivity between uh, Edinburgh and, and, and London. Uh, they're very interlinked. Um, the, essentially, uh, I mean, my concern is the, the amount of time that it would take to work everything out. Um, and the, uh, the devil, uh, as I'm a lawyer, uh, let me tell you, always lies in the detail. Um, so the time it would take to pass the legislation, the regulations, give effect to them, develop the systems and software to, to implement. Uh, I mean, this is across all sectors, not just financial services. Um, and I suppose the worry for everybody north and south of the border is whether during this period it would have a chilling effect mm. on trade and investment. Uh, from outside. Yeah, I think I'm right in saying that the first pension fund was invented by the Presbyterian Church in Scotland in the 1700s, I think. Uh, 
they did what would now be called an actuarial calculation and created the first pension fund for their ministers. But Kirby, you have a question for Fiona. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I suppose if one looks at the city of London, it has become, and so it has been since I think the 60s and the 1950s, a very, very important uh, source of capital for global businesses and, and, and for, you know, even American businesses trying to create a foothold in uh, the European market and in the British market and then potentially to mm -hmm. jump from there into the African market. Given Scottish independence, given what is happening in the Eurozone with tighter rules and so on, what is the City of London doing, especially in the next 12 months, in order to ensure that they continue to be a city that can be important for, for companies to raise capital and to be important on a capital scale? Well, as you might imagine, we are very actively engaged in the European debate for the reasons you've articulated, because um, you know, the vast majority of city businesses um, value being in the EU and the proximity, being part of the, the, the single market. Um, we have uh, established, we have an office in Brussels, obviously, um, uh, that keeps uh, close to, to, to developments and is part of the development of the, 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 the regulations that come from there. Uh, but we've also established uh, dialogues with our counterparts uh, in a number of uh, European countries um, uh, in order to build a consensus. And uh, uh, it's not really very difficult to achieve that consensus because actually we'd all like the new European Commission to focus on the growth and jobs agenda. Um, and particularly, I think, on, 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 on a passion of mine, which is long-term finance. Well, uh, Fiona, our Nigerian colleague uh, Wale Famarewa joins uh, the conversation now. Wale, we know that uh, the Lord Mayor isn't coming to the west of Africa this time, is going to the east, but uh, if she was coming and you sat down with her, what would you want to know? Because you're not with her, but uh, as you say, you are virtually with her. Yeah, good morning, um, David. Well, of course, we do know that the previous Lord Mayor did visit Nigeria not too long ago. But my question to the Lord Mayor, Lord Mayor, good morning to you. Um, my question would be to get your, your thoughts on the strategic links between Nigeria and, of course, London, the city of London. I do recall that when the last Lord Mayor was in Nigeria, he did mention that as many as a million Nigerians live in the city of Lagos. So clearly there are very historical links between the two countries. Um, your thoughts about, from a business perspective, strategically, what would you like to see between um, the city of London and Nigeria? Well. There are, of course, there are strong uh, ties already, um, uh, as you know, and, and you did say the Lord Mayor had visited uh, before. I'm, uh, I'm sorry that I, I can't do everything because I have a soft spot for, for West Africa, uh, having, having worked in, in several countries there. But between um, the, um, apart from uh, the energy sector, uh, which has always been um, uh, in the center of the, the, the radar screen. Um, again, um, there is, uh, uh, there's lots of opportunity in the financial and professional services area. Actually, you have a, have a, a, a very good legal profession. I have many, uh, many contacts with them. Uh, but um, there's uh, uh, partnering on uh, again, capital markets um, and looking at um, public-private partnerships on which the UK has, of course, an enormously uh, deep and long experience, but again has been the collector and implementer of, of uh, best practice from all over the world. Um, but really, you know, for a, a made in Nigeria uh, solution. Wola, you had another question? Right. Uh, I think an interesting point would be uh, maybe developing even um, the trade links between the two cities. Um, because, uh, like I mentioned, if a million Nigerians live in London right now, then clearly there's an appetite for a lot of Nigerian-made products. So your thoughts about the potential for Nigerian companies to begin to export goods to the UK, given the, the strong Nigerian population in London? Yes, indeed. Uh, but I think that um, Nigerian, the, the, the market um, in, in London, sorry, the market in the UK imports a great deal uh, from the African con continent. In fact, they, I think they, they import more than they, than they export. 
um, and the um, uh, happily, of course, we are experiencing um, something between three and a half, four percent growth. So you're not looking at, at, a, at the situation that we have in, in uh, some of the European countries where, where growth has, has slowed uh, so much. So that uh, there, the, the opportunities for I imports from Nigeria, I think, can only grow. Fiona, just coming back to us in uh, Johannesburg for a moment, the other story in the news at the moment is the European Union trying to cap the bonuses that are awarded to executives in the financial services sector. I think it's a 100% mm -hmm. bonus is the cap under special circumstances, 200%. And that, of course, would right. seriously undermine uh, London's, the city of London and uh, that, that square mile, as they call it, uh, of expertise and investment influence, uh, seriously undermine that. What have you been doing to try and stop this happening? The, this issue has been with us for uh, quite a while, and it uh, is not an easy one because the, the, uh, the, the businesses and banks in the city will tell you that they are only as good as their, their talent pool. Uh, we do know from a survey, I think, that Deloitte carried out that we have the, the largest number of, of highly qualified individuals. Um, New York is second, and I think Los Angeles third. Uh, so they are fishing in a global pool, and um, the, the, the global pool is very much um, uh, m very mobile. So there are, um, I think that we've seen a, um, a slowing of bonuses. Uh, the bonus levels in the UK are perhaps uh, uh, a bit lower, and they're certainly much more long term. Um, but there is an argument that um, you know, performance related remuneration works ba better than fixed salaries. Um, but of course, recently uh, the businesses have been criticized for reforming a bonus into something called an allowance. Um, there are obviously, you know, different ways of remunerating people, um, but the, uh, the 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 cap, um, the hundred percent and the two hundred percent with the consent of the shareholders, um, is something that actually appeared rather um, rather rather quickly, and it's an area where the European um, process is, I think. Uh, need uh, looking at it's one of our uh, one of our concerns about uh, about the EU. Well, the Lord Mayor of London, Fiona Wolf, is on a trip to South Africa. She's going up to East Africa as well. Thanks to her for joining us this morning uh, on Open Exchange, and to our market commentator this morning, Kobi Lekranji from uh, Klukas Gray.